Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. And today we're not going to do some crazy tutorial in Photoshop on how to post process things and make them incredible. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about data collection. When I go on scene, I'm a data collector. Okay, so where does this whole data collection mentality come from? Well, I was recently on a workshop, and in that workshop, we were in Olympic National Park, beautiful place to be collecting data. <laughs> and uh, when I was telling the, the attendees was that when I go on scene, I'm a data collector. Yes, I involve my emotions in the scene. I look at what I'm shooting and I try to gather some type of emotional development towards that uh, scene. And I remember those things when I go into post-production. But while I'm on scene, I'm not trying to get too creative. I'm just trying to be a data collector. And in that, it's just like any type of data collection agency that pulls together data and uh, stores it somewhere. Uh, unlike my business, it doesn't have GDPR regulations against it. Okay, that was a bad joke. <laughs> and by the way, I did update my terms. But the idea here is that your camera and your camera sensor, your sensor more importantly, is actually a data collector. It collects the data that's on the scene. And what we don't think about a lot of times in post is what we can actually do with that data. So I push my pixels pretty darn hard when I'm editing my images. So I really consider that data collection while I'm on scene to be one of the most critical steps for my post production. How often do you think about that? Is that something that you think about? So what I've done here is I've set up kind of a, a controlled experiment with an image that wasn't taken in Olympic National Park. This was actually taken in Yosemite with a Sony a7R2. But during this process, I was shooting a lot of bracketed images. So those brackets actually helped me control this experiment to show you exactly what it is that I'm talking about. If you want these raw files so that you can follow along, go ahead and look in the description if you're on YouTube and use that link to download these um, raw files so that you can follow along with me and you can also do some experimentation with this data collection concept. What I'm talking about with data collection is that your your sensor is pulling in colors, it's pulling in tones, it's it's recording things at certain speeds so that uh, whatever your ISO might be so that it records or doesn't record quite as much noise as it would. But then there's always this concept of, okay, well, how much data do I need to collect and how do I need to collect it? So oftentimes we shoot bracketed images for either if you're going to HDR those, you can HDR them because you get the best of all three worlds, or you just want to be on the safe side. You want to collect the, the proper data while you're there so that when you get into post-production, maybe you aren't going to do the HDR process, but you're going to use one of those brackets that has better information. So what I have here is a zero exposure value image, a negative two exposure value image, and a plus two exposure value image of the exact same thing. So when we talk about the data collection here, I'm not gonna be talking about HDR. What I'm talking about is the data collection and how your sensor captures data and what you can do with that data and what's available there. So if we look at this image, we can see that we have a really good amount of data for these darker areas because we shot at plus two. Anything that's darker in that meter is going to essentially get brighter. So this is good data down here for the darker areas. This is really great data up here for the sky, but not so much down here for the uh, ground or the dark areas. And then this obviously is going to be your perfect blend of both because it's the metered zero exposure value, right? So let's talk about these plus two and negative two for a second here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and modify this data a little bit, push the data around. Notice how I'm not talking about sliders here. I'm actually physically going to be looking at the histogram for the most part for this. I'm going to go ahead and increase this exposure a little bit to about the plus one mark. Then I'm going to go ahead and go to the white point, move the white point over to here, and then the black point, move it over until we have an evened out histogram here. I might even open up that exposure a little bit more and then pull back on the white point and the black point to about right. Well, let's bring that up to about there. I can probably even bring this exposure value over a little bit more and then drop this white point down. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get a nice evened out histogram so that you can see what I can do to the data in this image. Mind you, this is the negative two image. Let's go to the plus two now. So we need to bring this down so that we can make uh, that sky a little bit brighter or darker, I should say, and that should be good there. Don't mind all the dust all over my sensor, okay? I usually fix that in post. And we're gonna bring down the white point here so it's not so blaring there, and bring over the, the dark point here. So we should have an exposure that's relatively similar. This might need to be a little bit brighter here, 
and then let's go into this image and this image. So they're, they're relatively close. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the typical HDR thing where I drop down those highlights and bring up those shadows to about right there. And then I'll drop those highlights a little bit more. This is again, the negative two, and this is the plus two. So I'll drop down those highlights and bring up those shadows. So what you're going to realize here is that these exposures are relatively similar. They're almost, they're almost exact, almost. But there's some differences that are happening here that I really want you to pay attention to. This is the negative two exposure value. Remember, the negative two exposure value did a really good job of getting the sky in there. So look at the colors in the sky and look at the, the highlights specifically. Look at how the blue is a very nice blue and the highlights are beautiful. Okay, look at this one. We couldn't recover those highlights quite as well. Look at the difference between the transition between the highlights and the midtones. It's really hazy. It's not very good. And that's, of course, because this was a plus two exposure and this was a negative two exposure. Okay. Look at the sky, though. The sky is also a little bit cyan. Let's go to the negative two exposure. If we look at the negative two exposure, the sky is nice and blue. Let's go to the plus two and look down here. If we look down here, we can see that our, t our color temperature is beautiful down here, right? Let's look at this one. It's a little on the green side. Let's actually zoom in here. Let's go to plus 100. And then we'll go right down to the corner of this image at 100. Okay. This is the, the kicker here is where noise starts to come in because we took a negative exposure value and we told it to go plus two. Let's look at this one. We're going to go that 100% zoom and we're going to zoom in right down to here. Okay, we don't have noise down here. Why is that? Well, that's because the image that we shot here at plus two had a beautiful amount of data down there. So it didn't have to exploit that data quite as much to, to make it look this good. This image, on the other hand, we really had to exploit the data that was recorded there so that we could get a decent looking foreground from there. The trade off is noise. So the question is here. I know we could shoot for HDR and we could always bracket everything. But what I want to talk to you about is what happens when we take these exposures. Because some people will say, well, just shoot, you know, uh, one exposure value less or one exposure value more. Depending on your camera, it's going to collect data differently. There was this thing I always heard in the past about, you know, shoot to the right of your histogram. You know, I tend to shoot more towards the left of my histogram. I have my reasons for that. And my reasons for that are it's a barrier. It's a safety net. I know that this noise that's coming across right now is coming across because I took a negative two exposure value, told it to basically go almost to plus two and exploited the data that was there. I do get this shadowy area open more, but it comes with the trade off of noise and a green color cast. This doesn't have a green color cast. It has uh, it's a beautiful color temperature because it's the perfect color temperature that was recorded while we were on the scene. Now let's go ahead and zoom up though. Let's go ahead and take this image and go up to the top of our photograph here and talk about what's happening to the highlights and the sky. Let's talk about these highlights and the sky. So this image looks great up here, doesn't it? We have a, a nice blue sky. Our highlights have beautiful separation. Our midtones are great. Look at this one. The highlights look like, you know, they, they've got these blown out areas. And of course, it's a plus two exposure. I understand that part. But what I'm trying to show you here is look at the color that's happening up here. It's a cyanish sky, whereas this is the blue sky. Look at the trade off in temperature that we're getting here. What I'm trying to get at here is just to have you get to know your sensor. Know your sensor well enough to know what happens when you take a plus two exposure and bring it down to negative two or take a negative two exposure and go to plus two. OK, things are going to happen and there's going to be a trade off. Obviously, the best choice is to get that zero perfect exposure value, but it doesn't always work that way. What about a sunset on the beach with tons of dynamic range in between? If you only have one shot, which one are you going to take? I know what I'm going to take. I'm going to take more of a negative two exposure rather than a plus two exposure because the highlights won't render very well with my camera sensor. OK, every camera sensor is going to be different. So what it's up to you is it's up to you to now take your camera sensor and experiment with it. Do one of these uh, experiments where instead of taking those bracketed images and merging them to HDR right off the bat, see what happens when you take that plus two and drop it down to negative two. Record those things in your mind and know what's going to happen with your camera sensor when it makes that raw file. That's another thing about raw files. Every camera makes a different raw file. 
Isn't that crazy? So a Sony a7R2 and a Sony a7R3, they do not make the same RAW file. They make a different RAW file. Your Canon uh, 6D versus your 5DS, they don't make the same RAW file. Even though it says .CR2, it's a .CR2 with a different amount of data being recorded into it. And every sensor is going to record things differently. So I talk a lot about post-production, don't I? On this channel and also through all of my programs that I offer you. But how often do we talk about the data that we're collecting in the images and how far we can push that data. So for, for my intents and purposes, this would not be, this plus two would not be a good image for me to process because of the highlights and the way they look. If by chance I was only given that one shot, I would actually prefer to have that negative two exposure value. And you might think, well, that comes with noise, Blake. Well, that's true, it does. But guess what? Noise is data. That's data that I can manipulate blown out highlights, there is no data there. That is not data that I can manipulate. I can manipulate this data and go into my noise reduction and do a decent amount of noise reduction and color noise reduction to bring this area back well enough that I can work with this exposure value. If we zoom in here now, and even if I were to do some sharpening on here, press alter option for my mask, we have a really decent uh, starting point here for the process and the work that I would be doing in Photoshop. It also comes down to what's the most important thing in the image. These trees in this area here, not quite as important. This is supporting data for all the beauty that's happening down here. This, uh, to me, is not the important part of the image. Even though it's rendered beautifully in that plus two exposure, this is the data that's the most important. So when it really comes down to it, what would I prefer? Well, for my, the way I shoot and the way I process, I would choose to go more towards a negative exposure than I would a positive exposure. Now I know that there's always variables and there's always things that are different, but what I'm trying to get with you with this practice is to use your camera, understand your sensor and know how far you can push those raw files because every camera is going to be different. In my Canon, actually, it was a little bit better on the highlights than it was on the shadows. If I tried to do this with my old Canon, if I had a Canon 6D, those shadows would be really noisy, there'd be a lot of color noise, and I actually found more success on the plus side of my exposures rather than the negative side of my exposures. I knew that with that camera, but if I tried to do the same thing with my Sony a7R2 or Sony a7R3, my data manipulation process would have to be totally different when I went into my post-production process. Whoa, it looks like there's a whistling man right here. There's his two eyes and his mouth. Crazy. <laughs> so when I go into things like the Zone System Express and Palette Effects to push and pull the data in my image, I'm already going in knowing these things about my camera sensor. All I'm trying to do with this practice and with this study and this little tutorial here is to get you thinking about your raw file and get you experimenting with your raw file. I tell you all the time to experiment in Photoshop. This is me telling you to experiment with your camera to understand it better. So again, my name is Blake Rudis with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. If you like this, please comment on it, share it, tell a friend, and I'd love to hear in the comments uh, what you think about your camera sensor, uh, whether you have a Sony or a Nikon or a Canon, and maybe give us some of the, the data that you've collected so that we can all help each other out here when we're in our data collection process. Thank you very much for taking time to watch this. I sincerely appreciate it.